Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today for One Roster in Five Minutes, an introduction to One EdTech's One Roster 1.2 standard. I'm Joshua McGee, Senior Technical Program Manager in charge of the One Roster work. Let's get started. In today's video, we'll be covering three primary topics. What is One Roster? Who does One Roster help? How does One Roster work? I'll then be leaving you with a couple of resources to help you get more information. So let's uh, dive right in. What is One Roster? One Roster has the marketing tagline, digital on day one. That's meant to describe how it impacts the EdTech ecosystem. In simple terms, One Roster is a technical specification that helps to standardize how data is shared between systems, specifically in the context of K-12 educational technology. A technical standard means that it is agreed upon way of doing things, similar to in school how we're taught to use APA and MLA as our citation formats, one roster describes how data is sent between EdTech systems. Currently, the active version of one roster is one roster 1.2. So how does one roster help? Let's start by talking about the benefits of one roster for institutions. Chief among them is that it removes the need for double, triple, quadruple, quintuple entry, into their various systems. All institutions have many applications that are used in either administration or in the acts of teaching and learning. One roster enables the easy sharing of data from a source of truth system, say like a student information system, SIS, to downstream learning applications or tools, think things like an LMS or a learning management system, an assessment application, or even content tools. This simplifies the day-to-day -day data exchange needs removes the need for manual effort and streamlines the onboarding process of new suppliers and applications. One roster also provides mechanics for those applications to sync their grades or results back into the grade book of record, wherever that might live. Since these systems get provisioned using the same mechanics and the same data, tracking of learner success across disparate apps becomes doable and easier. How about for suppliers? What does one roster do for suppliers? Suppliers benefit from implementing one roster in a few additional ways. You know, when you're in college and you're using, you're writing your research papers and you're using MLA or APA, typically you learn how to do one, which means you can apply that knowledge into additional papers that you do. The same pattern exists for the use of EdTech standards. So developing a one roster integration once allows you to use that that integration for multiple partners that you may need to integrate with. There, of course, might be necessary tweaks based on specific requirements for an application type or for a specific institution. But as some of our members have told, this greatly reduces the time to market for any deployment of an integration with a new partner. One going as far as saying it reduced their development time by a factor of 10. Additionally, because One Roster is such a well-known and respected name in the K-12 space, many institutions use it as a requirement for uh, their RFPs. So being a One Roster implemented provider or consumer allows you to pass those parts of RFP documents. But don't take my word for it. Well, you can't take my word for it, but don't. Uh, our members who help to write these standards uh, promote our work every day, like this quote from one of our members at D2L. So let's talk a little bit about what's under the hood. One roster breaks down into two ways to exchange data and three groupings of data. We have two transport modes for flexibility, and then the three services or groupings of data means you only have to implement the pieces of one roster that you need. The original use case that one roster was designed to solve for was the big bulk data needs of moving information from a source of truth system, like an SIS, to the main downstream teaching and learning systems, like a learning management system. Let's take a quick aside and talk about what we mean by the word rostering. In our context, a roster is a list of people and any information about them. So when you think about people in the context of schools, you have teachers and students, you have classes, courses that they may be enrolled in. You may have uh, information about uh, the organization. Things like that is what we're talking about when we're talking about a roster in the context of uh, one roster. And then rostering, the verb, is how we send that data around. 
one roster data is put into a number of different groups. We have information about users and their demographics. We have information about orgs and the orgs that users are associated with, the classes and courses that they may be enrolled in, uh, what results they may be getting on different activities, the academic terms that those activities and classes are being taught in, and then any resources that may be needed for those activities and those classes. In the context of an institution or the entire population of an institution, this is quite a lot of data. Because it is so much data, we have taken to breaking it into three services uh, so that institutions and suppliers may only implement the parts of it they need, greatly reducing the complexity. Um, the three services are rostering, gradebook, and resources, with rostering being the data about students and teachers and the classes and courses that they're enrolled in, gradebook being information about the results that they get on activities that sync back to the gradebook of record, and then resources being data about the user and class content that may be needed in those courses. In order to send that data around, we've defined two mechanics or two transport modes. Um, we have a secure REST API um, for system to system connection, and as well as a CSV flat file exchange for bulk data um, outside of the context of a direct uh, system to system connection. But because these are both built on top of the same data model, institutions and suppliers alike are, are able to implement one or both based on their needs, so you do not need to rob Peter to pay Paul. So, if you wanna learn more, where do you go? I'll give you a couple of resources not to overburden you. Of course, you can always go to the One Ed Tech homepage where you'll be able to get information about One Roster or any other One Ed Tech standard at www.oneedtech.org. You can go to the One Roster homepage for access to information about One Roster, whether it's specification and technical documentation, RFP language and guidance, or other documentation. You can find that at oneedtech.org slash standards slash One Roster. Or you can go to this YouTube page to find more videos about One Roster or other One Ed Tech standards, both short introductory type videos as well as some longer form technical deep dives. And you can find that at www.youtube.com slash C slash One Ed Tech. Thank you very much for listening to this introduction to One Roster. 